Some people believe the Kansas City Chiefs have one of the best offensive lines in the league, and I'm here to tell you that is absolutely fact. In fact, I think the Chiefs might have the second or third best offensive line. And when you consider the fact that the Chiefs 57 times lined up yesterday to take on the Los Angeles Chargers, and in those 57 snaps, the Chargers had one sack and two quarterback hits. That's a pretty damn good job. Some people also say that the Chargers might be the best defensive line. And I almost agree with that. But how did the Chiefs actually dominate the Chargers defensive line? It's plays like this. Look at this small little crease created for Hilaire. Of course, on the first play of the game, the Chiefs offensive line is coming out there and letting the Chargers defensive line know what's about to happen. I want you guys to watch this block right here by Trey Smith on Joseph Day and watch the movement. At the point of attack, the second he makes contact, look at as he turns him and moves him and really seals it off for the running back. As a running back, you can't expect more than what Trey Smith just did on this play right here. It's a really nice rep. It's a really nice job by the offensive line. Let's go ahead and jump forward into the next play. Jumping forward into this next rep, this is the first drive of the game still. I want you guys to check this green pass out to the running back here. I want to break this play down because there is an art to running screens and the Kansas City Chiefs really do a great job. Andy Reid does a great job teaching how to properly run screens. He makes sure the offensive lineman knows who goes first, who goes second, who's the front side block, who's the back side seal. As this play begins on the front side, you're going to get Orlando Brown who's going to vertically set. You're going to get a double team block here and it's really those two guys that end up being the front and back side block on the screen and the guys that are going to lead the screen. On this play, Humphrey, the center, is going to be the guy that's going to go and really seal off. And I know the broadcast crew mentioned Creed Humphrey's block, but they don't really talk about the left guard, Joe Thune. Because in my opinion, this play does not work without Thune doing what he does on this play. Yes, this is a nice seal out block, but it's really Thune who makes sure the backside is sealed off at the same time he's going to come front side and stop the linebacker. So really nice job by Thune to get out there and really push the linebacker forward. And the running back picks up a nice chunk of yards. That's a great job by the center and left guard. Jumping forward, I do want to show this play really quickly because I think this play right here was one of the plays that really stopped the first drive. You guys can see this is a handoff to McCall Hardman. And as you guys can see, Joey Bowes on the front side is going to blow this play up. And this play ends up losing four yards. But there is a block that I want to point out here by Joe Thune because I think he does a great job. Now, here's the concept. Creed is supposed to seal off this three-tech defensive tackle, and Thune is actually trying to get around and get up here and seal off the linebacker, Kenneth Murray Jr. Now, as the play begins, he's going to run right into Creed at the point of attack right there, and you're going to see that Kenneth Murray actually is able to get through this gap, and he actually gets in front of Thune, but the Pro Bowl left guard does something referred to as a slingshot block. And he's going to force Murray to just go upfield. There it is right there. That's a great job by him because he actually creates a backside lane. Now, if you guys missed it, let me rewind it a little bit. And you guys can check it out once again. There it is, the slingshot block. It's really a, a block that sometimes does get called as a hold, but 90% of the time it doesn't. Basically, what you do is with your right hand, you're going to pull the shoulder pad. And with your left hand, you get it on the backside of the defensive lineman or linebacker in this case. And with that back hand, you're going to basically force him forward. There it is. So you pull with your right hand, you push with that back hand, and then you get on the back side of the guy and you cut him off. And you guys may say it doesn't matter because the play lost four yards. But the reason why it matters is if this was some sort of inside zone to the right and Thune does this block here, he's creating a wall. And the running back may be able to cut it back into this lane. And I did want to just point that out. Of course, the reason why there's no cutback is because of number 99. Trey Smith needed to do a better job to really seal it off here. I'm not sure exactly what happens, but you guys can see number 99 gets to the outside. I'm not sure if there was some sort of miscommunication, but either way, I did want to point out Thune's block. I think it was a good job. Let's get into the next rep. On this play, the Chargers are in a cover one rat, and the way to beat that is by running crossing patterns. That's exactly what the Chiefs do right here on this deep pass to McCall Hardman. Now you're going to see Derwin James blitz off the edge and you're going to see running back Isaiah Pacheco do a great job picking the blitz up. And Patrick Mahomes is able to stay clean and convert this deep pass to McCool Hardman. It's a great job by the entire offensive line, but an even better job by the running back to be able to see where the blitz is coming from and pick it up. Derwin James is not an easy player to pick up when it comes to blitzing. And Pacheco does a great job getting his nose right in there and punching Derwin James in the mouth, taking it on. Keep in mind. Last week, James had two sacks and a couple of quarterback hits coming off the edge here. 
and he was very ineffective in terms of blitzing last night and a lot of it goes to the running backs Jerick McKinnon and Isaiah Pacheco did a great job picking these blitzes up let's get into the next rep I want to highlight this play really quickly by the interior offensive line. Creed Humphrey does a great job down blocking. Trey Smith does a great job getting up to the next level. And Thune's going to come around and trap this defensive lineman. The running back's going to pick up six yards right through the interior. You know, an argument could be made that the best interior offensive line belongs to the Chiefs. From right guard to left guard, you can make the argument because I think Creed Humphrey is the second best center in the NFL right behind Jason Kelsey. Trey Smith is probably a top 10 guard. And Joe Thune is definitely a top 10 guard. And I don't know if any other team has that. And I think the only team, generally speaking, that has a better offense in London than the Chiefs right now are the Philadelphia Eagles. Either way, that's a nice run right there. Let's get into the next rep. One of the things that the Kansas City Chiefs do that's a little bit different than most other teams is they really mix up their usage of inside zone, outside zone, and power. And they really mix things up. On that last play, you guys watched that quick trap play. That was a power run. And on this play, literally two plays later, they're going to run this zone concept to the left here. And Trey Smith, in my opinion, does so much better in the zone. And here's why. As the running back takes this ball to the outside and Boza sets the edge, he's going to start looking for like these cutback lanes to open. Rather, that's between the center, the guards, the tackles, wherever it may be, the running back's going to look for that cutback lane. And one of the things Smith does a really good job at is he takes his guy and he really stretches that guy and he really moves him outwards. So as you guys watch this play, look at the movement that Smith is generating. Look how far he's taken his guy relative to where he started. And I said that I think Smith is better in the zone concept, but I also think the same thing about the center Creed Humphrey. He does a great job on this play sealing off Joseph Day, who is the Chargers best interior offensive lineman. Look at this seal off right here. Now, just to criticize Joe Thune a little bit, he's going to miss Derwin James coming through this gap. And of course, James is the guy that's going to make the play. In my opinion, because James is the backside pursuit and he is taking the gap underneath as opposed to over the top, I think the left guard should have picked Derwin James up. You guys can see he's going to get underneath and he's going to make the tackle on the running back. But Humphrey still does a great job sealing off and creating that lane right there. If Thune was able to get off and stop James here, Look at the lane that this running back would have picked up, man. He would have had at least another five to eight yards. Either way, the offense line still did a really good job on this play. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. Jumping forward into this next rep, I want to give some credit to Orlando Brown Jr. Because I know there's a lot of hate around Brown. I know some Chiefs fans have posted on Twitter that they didn't like his game week one. Some people have said, you know, he's lazy or he's this or he's that. But I think Orlando Brown has some of the best technique I've ever seen. And this play right here is a great example of what makes him so good. You know, Cleo Mack is a technician. The guy will long arm you. He will swim over you. He'll be twitchy and get to the inside. And Brown handles him right here using what is referred to as a turn snatch. Now, first and foremost, Cleo Mack is going to give Brown that long arm, which is Mack's go-to move. And there's three different ways that you can beat the long arm. You can fork the arm upwards and by grabbing onto the wrist and really pushing that arm up. You can snatch and trap by punching the arm downwards and which removes the leverage. Or you can do the turn and snatch, which is exactly what Brown's going to do right there. If you guys missed it, check it out again. Mack is going to get that long arm and Brown's going to dip right there he's gonna turn and snatch down mac right there and that is a great job by orlando brown jr to really be able to defeat khalil mac now i am positive these type of plays for these type of true pass sets i am positive orlando brown was 100 ready to prove that he can shut down some of the most elite pass rushers and he did a really good job in these one-on-one -on -one situations let's go ahead and jump forward into the next rep on this play kenneth murray is going to blitz and watch creed humphrey pick it up and shut it down the Kansas City Chiefs center's ability to anchor down is so unique. It's so nice. I mean, look at this play right here. A guy's running full speed and makes contact, and Humphrey doesn't even move. He just shuts it down by really just anchoring down, getting those feet out wide, dipping his hips. This is a really nice job right here by Humphrey. And of course, the pass to the running back, and he picks up a nice chunk of yards. Great job by the offensive line. Let's go ahead and jump forward. Not every rep by Andrew Wiley is a perfect rep, but this one's a really good job here. Double teaming down on number 49 initially, and then getting back outside and picking up Joey Boza, which allows Patrick Mahomes to step up and deliver a deep pass. And this is the touchdown throw, as you guys can see, to Watson. That's a really nice job by Wiley. Now, I do think Wiley needs to continue to develop, but that was a nice play, and I did want to just point it out. Let's go ahead and jump forward. 
Now, the final play I want to talk about is the zone play to the left of your screen here in which Clyde picks up a bunch of yards. I think this one went for 51 yards. Great job. Great play. But the blocking is what allowed this play to really hit. I want you guys to watch Orlando Brown right now and watch the technique, the way he uses to be able to get to the inside of number 98. He's going to punch number 98's left hand down right there, and then he's going to just cut him off by jumping in front of him. That block is effective. That block works, and that right there is unique because people don't do that. 99.9% .9 of offensive linemen do not know that you can do things like this to win. Whatever works, works, and for Orlando Brown being able to punch down on number 98 right there and then just jumping in front of him works. Keep in mind, he has the backside block, and that one's perfect right there. Earlier, we mentioned that Trey Smith does a great job making contact with people, but once he makes contact, he continues to push those guys and stretch them, and he does that on this play as well. Check out Trey Smith getting out there, making contact with 56, and then just pushing him and continue to force him outwards. More so than that, then watch the double team block by the center and left guard. The left guard is going to actually do a great job on this play. Remember the time that he missed Derwin James? When Derwin James came on this backside gap? Well, this time he's not going to miss number 49 because 49 is in his view. 49 is going to try to go underneath and Joe Thune gets off of the double team and picks up number 49. These two guys do a great job double teaming and making sure they pick up the correct guy that needs to be picked up. And of course, Wiley does a good job on Boza. You got some good down blocks here by the tight end and wide receiver. And Clyde picks up a bunch of yards. And you can say this offensive line is why he picked up a bunch of yards. That's a great job right there by the O-line. Overall, I was very impressed by the Chiefs offensive line. Because last week, I watched the Raiders offensive line take on this Chargers defensive line. And after two weeks, it is clear. This Chargers defensive line, front seven, you can even say the defense in general is one of the best defenses in the league. And the Chiefs did a really great job, in my opinion, handling them. I think they're going to be one of the best offensive lines, and I think most people are going to agree to that as the season kind of goes along. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If this is the first time you're on this channel, please consider subscribing, thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.